What I was saying was that I don't believe it's solely economics. Because no matter how much money you have, mm -hmm. no matter who you marry or who you sleep with, no matter what type of circles you find yourself in, mm -hmm. in their eyes, you're still a nigger. And if you get out of line, they will put you back in place. So I would say it was solely about the money. And those who have the real money, the international bankers, those who have the real money are not black. So we are dealt with strictly and solely because of our race. It's not that if we get $10 million, it's over. Or if I get $15 million, I'm free. Or if I get $20 million, I can go ahead and live a happy life. They will never let you do it. Because in their mind, they are so afraid of black people doing to them what they have done to us. Jared? I think, uh, I think what Mr. Prophet is onto is something that really reflects the fact that the whole vision of the 1960s civil rights movement was based on an illusion. Can you imagine, would Martin Luther King have thought in a million years that 30 years after the movement, a man would be sitting here saying what he's saying. In effect, that it's separate, it's hopeless, let's go our separate ways. First what of he's all, saying. First of all, no, no, no. no first of all, let me respond. I refuse to sit up on this panel mm -hmm. and allow this man to try and cause some type of divide and conquer mechanism between me and my brother, Dr. Wait King. A no, no, you just no. said. You no, 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 no. no, so too long we played that game. Malcolm or King, uh, the boys or Washington. Listen. The bottom line is that Dr. King and any other person that's feeling for justice for black people have the same objective, as do I. I want to see the elevation and the, and, and, and the elevation of our race and of our people. Let's go to this call. J.D. from Louisiana. What's your question or comment? Thanks for your call. I'm tired of hearing all this cry, baby. All I ever hear about is, oh, white people, you so bad. Look, when I go to work, we got to have police at the stop sign and stop brothers from trying to get up and... And, and carjacking us, or, or jumping in our cars, or, or uh, uh, I think last year we even had a little white boy rode by on a bike and got his throat slit. Yeah, we are so terrible. Look, all I want in this world is for you as black people to educate yourself, uplift yourself, and I'll give you your just deserves. But I'll be damned if you're going to sit there and holler and scream at me and think I'm just going to give you everything. Take yourself, lift yourself okay. up, brother. Don't be first looking at me all, like that. First of all, lift what's his name, J.D.? First of all, J.D., JD I yes, ain't asking you for nothing. There's nothing that you can do for me. I and if you think, listen to me, if you think I'm not yelling at each other, if you think, if you JD, think I'm sitting up on this stage, educated. you don't want to take what the state takes to prove yourself. J.D., if you think I'm sitting up on this stage, JD, thank you. If you think I'm sitting up on this panel take a break. trying on, to get you to give me something, you are out of your mind. We gotta take There's a break now. That you can do for me that I can't do for myself. For those affiliates who have to leave us now, certainly thank you for watching. For the rest of you, we'll be right back, folks. 1 800 618 2900. Race relations in this country. Are we separate and unequal? we have here. I have no doubt that we can uh, ease race relations in this country. However, it will be no easy task. Unfortunately, most of us want the quick fix and that just won't happen. Racism took hundreds of years to create and it will take much more time to resolve. Are we a divided nation and can races ever get along? In 1968, the Kerner Commission's description of America said that we are a nation, black and white, separate and unequal. Nearly 30 years later, has anything changed? And I'm sure you've heard of Dinesh D'Souza's new book, The End of Racism. He appeared on News Talk Television last Friday with host Lisa Maria. So let's take a look and hear what he had to say. So the thesis of my book is that racism will end in America when blacks become fully competitive with other groups. The problem is that on every measure of academic achievement and economic performance, blacks are falling behind not just whites, but also Asians, Hispanics, and other immigrant groups. Why don't you feel that, uh, that, that blacks are competing? Well, I think it's not because of genes. I reject the genetic view. And I also think it's not because of racism, because if we could abolish, somehow if we could magically get rid of racism overnight, many of the most serious problems faced by blacks would remain. Uh, to abolish racism would not, be, would not increase black test scores, would not increase black rates of business formation, would not reduce black-on-black -black crime, 
would not strengthen black families. I think we're dealing with a cultural phenomenon. In the inner city, for example, we see the Cubans, we see the West Indians, uh, we see the Koreans setting up entrepreneurial associations, uh, and within a generation, their daughters are valedictorians, they move to the suburbs. So I think African Americans are too reliant on the government. They focus too much, for example, on what the government can do for us, and too little on entrepreneurship, which I think is the key. What about that, Ed? Entrepreneurship. Is that where, where the African American community needs to go? No, I don't think the African American community needs to go to running its own businesses, keeping its own house in order. I think that is where we already are. Again, ladies and gentlemen, why are we pretending like the majority of black people are criminal? The majority of black people are completely unfamily oriented. The majority of black people are on drugs. We are not. I am well, not. Well, what I changes? The... Listen to what D'Souza was saying. In certain communities where there was some entrepreneurship to a great degree, you had a different outcome when it came to the children. So what do you say about entrepreneurship in poorer communities? There were bright Okay, let me then take you, let me give you the historic lesson. Let me, contrary to what our colleague wants to do, because the same way that the Germans don't particularly like to talk about Auschwitz and Dachau and Buchenwald, he doesn't want to talk about slavery. Let me take you to slavery. After slavery, during Reconstruction, black former slaves built a America in which they owned all these businesses, in which they had a good life, in which they had education. What they did is in the Hayes-Tilden Compromise, the government came in and basically took all of that away. We have, as a black people, repeatedly, whether it was Garvey, whether it was Martin Luther King, built up all the things that this man is telling us to do, and they have systematically, each and every time, tore it back down. So what do you do to hang, hang, on, hang on to it in 1995? Let's start with the million. Well, I, here again, I think that the average black person, and here again, I think this is a critical point that must be made. The average black American in the United States today, 1995, if he, she, or it is alive, that is a monument to an incredible success story. Most of us are surviving. Most of us have done very well. And I think what you saw yesterday in the march is that a generation of leadership has changed in that an increasing number of blacks are no longer expecting the solutions to come from anything that has to do with white America. Look, mm. you have a question. What's your name? Ga My name is Don Arkin. Uh, Garrett, I'd like to address you. Uh, several times during the show, you kept saying that 90% of the people incarcerated are black males. No, no, I never said that. Well, that's the impression that I got anyway. What I want to say is uh, Mr. Berkowitz, Jeffrey Dahmer, and uh, Charles Manson, the last time I looked, were my color. But you know what, to make a comment to that? Every time that somebody black does a crime, it's put on the front page as oh so bad. And every time a man like Dahmer's or any of the rest of them that he has mentioned has hit the screen, we get movies out of that. It shows white America how to keep going on in the ways that are wrong. But if we do it, which we don't, thank God, we're not masters, then we're committed as wrong people, but we still go to jail. For yeah, that little ounce right. of cocaine, we go to jail. They bring it in, the white man, but we, the black man, go to jail for it. What, what I, have, I, would what like, uh, I would like what, to address... What, no, no, wait a second, well, hold on one second, hold on. I have one more statement no, no, no. to make that I, I have a lot of black friends. I was married interracially for uh, 12 years to a very beautiful black princess. My question, my statement is I'd like to see blacks working closer with blacks. In the sense that there was a beautiful black elderly lady in my building where I lived in Queens, and she was on public assistance. I used to drive her. She used to tell me the night before, I pray, I would like you to pray for me tonight that tomorrow when I go in for my assistance, that I don't have one of my own people because they question me like they're taking the money out of their pocket. They eat me alive. If I get a Caucasian person there, they just pass it through, and I'm allowed to go home with dignity. I'd like to see blacks working better with blacks, especially the ones that are in power, to sign that lady's check and to give it up instead of talking. Okay. Let me make